Welcome to worship today as we gather for another installment of Trinity to Go, a digital ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church here in downtown Bismarck. Our time today is for Sunday, the 13th of March, the second Sunday in Lent. I am Pastor Lee Herberg, and we begin our service this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all people into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the second Sunday in Lent is recorded in the Old Testament book of Genesis, the 15th chapter. God promises a childless and doubting Abram that he will have a child, that his descendants will be as numerous as the stars, and that the land of Canaan will be their inheritance. Abram's trust in God is sealed with a covenant-making ceremony, a sign of God's promise. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this day is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers close in against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes and my enemies, will stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary, sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing and make music to the Lord. 
Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me, turn not away from your servant in anger, cast me not away. You have been my helper, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. Subject me not to the will of my foes, for they rise up against me, false witnesses breathing violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading today is found in Philippians, the third chapter, the words of the Apostle Paul. Although Paul's devotion to Christ has caused him to be persecuted, he does not regret the course he has taken. Writing from prison, he expresses confidence in a glorious future and encourages other Christians to follow in his footsteps. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this day is recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Neither Herod's plotting nor Jerusalem's resistance to maternal love will deter Jesus from his sacrificial mission. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In the summer, when I was growing up in Wollaston, I would spend time at the farm, and sometimes I would spend time also at my aunt and uncle's house. And when I was there, I would help my aunt Evelyn with her chickens. Now she had rocky roads, and she, of course, butchered them for meals. And so I guess at a young age, I learned a little bit about that. And the memory, I guess, of the first time to see a chicken's head cut off stayed with me, not in a good way. But I do remember most of the time, the chickens were just sort of running around. 
and I guess I felt sorry for the mother hen because she must have known that her kids are not the brightest things. They spend their time just kind of walking around, usually in circles. They don't seem to know where they're going. Of course, there was a chicken coop that was needed to protect them. But it seems the mother hen was always trying to keep these kids somewhat close together. She wanted to nurture them and take care of them and protect them. We have an image today we use sometimes in maybe a derogatory fashion saying that, well, that person is a real mother hen. They're overly protective. They are fixated on keeping everything the same and together. But a mother hen, I think, is a good image because it is about gathering and protecting and nurturing. And that's the image Jesus uses today in our gospel as he talks about his mission. Jesus is like a mother hen who wants to gather, protect, and nurture that makes me feel good because the rest of the text is much like the first time I watched my Aunt Evelyn cut the head off the chicken. It was scary. It reminded me that life is not always sunshine and blue skies. Jesus is well aware of that. Today, he is told about the possibility, or rather should I say the probability, that his life is at great risk. And as Jesus continues to go on in his ministry, that risk becomes greater and greater to his life every day. And so the Pharisees come and say to him, get away from here for Herod wants to kill you. But Jesus does something interesting there. Just as he talks about himself as a mother hen who gathers, protects, and nurtures, he refers to Herod as a fox. That's why we had that chicken coop on the farm. Because those chickens needed to be shielded from the evils in their little world. Because a fox is a predator and they are easy targets as they walk around usually in circles. And so today, Jesus is lifting up the reality of evil in our life. But more than that, he's also talking about our reality as his children. For some reason, we are lured by evil. Jesus says in our text today, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. That's true. As people, we don't necessarily want to be gathered and nurtured and protected. We don't want to be smothered by this one who comes for us. We want to be able to do what we want to do. And so we find ourselves in life often in precarious places. We are lured this way and that way, way by the cares of the world, by those things that we see as temporary saviors, 
We are drawn to them. We don't want Jesus to keep smothering us. I think we do, though. Today, I think we realize just how vulnerable we are as people. Today, I am safe in the corner of the sanctuary here at Trinity in downtown Bismarck. And yet, half a world away, there is chaos, raw violence, unbelievable horror. And think of all the people today far away from us who are vulnerable. I'm glad that Jesus has a different approach than the world does. Where so often in this life we want to take and take and take. We're seeing an example of that from one country wanting to take another country. That kind of taking can't save. There is no life in it. But Jesus continues, whether we like it or not, to always be about that business of gathering, protecting, and nurturing. And as we spend now these days in Lent, you and I are called to realize our vulnerability, our sinfulness, that we do want to create our own gods that we don't want this Jesus smothering us, keeping us from our own agenda, but that we do need Jesus, because only in Jesus can we find life in this one who has gathered you and me, protected me and you, nurtured me and you, and kept us in the midst of all the foxes in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us together confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Today, O oh Lord, we are mindful of the people of Ukraine who live in fear for their lives. Today, Lord, we pray that your courage and wisdom is with them as they risk all to stand against aggression. Today, Lord, we're mindful of all those whose lives are at risk. Also be today with those who are now new refugees and give us the will to share what we have with those who are displaced. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in our own backyard, we also have those who have no home, those who face hunger, those who live in despair, those who find their lives at risk every day. Open our eyes to see how we might be the answer for someone else's prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In these waning winter days, O oh Lord, we pray that you give us the freshness of your word, that as we wait for ground to soften and seeds to be sown, that we remember that you plant in us the seed of faith and that you nurture that every day. You hear us when we cry to you. 
Today, Lord, we pray for those who struggle with life in body, mind, or spirit. Today, we lift especially before you Barb, Brenda, Cheryl, Don, Donna, Fran, Gary, Jerry, John, Karen, Kim, Mary, Mike, Steve, Tom, Cheryl, Margaret, Connie, Danell, Carol, Denise, Cole, Laura, Annette, Sherry, Jim, and Kurt. Be with all those who struggle this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O Lord, to pray the words you taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers this day, we lifted up the violence that is occurring half a world away from us today. The ELCA has, through its Lutheran disaster response, given us now an opportunity to be a part of having an open heart and a sharing hand to respond to those far from us. On February 24th, Russian forces invaded Ukraine, launching land, sea, and air attacks. Airports are now shut, and few railway lines are operational. Civilians fleeing the violence are heading towards Ukraine's western districts and such neighboring countries as Poland, Moldova, Slovakia, Romania, and Hungary. Hundreds of thousands of people are seeking refuge in neighboring countries. There are major humanitarian concerns for both internally displaced people and refugees. Many of these Ukrainians fleeing their homes need shelter, basic necessities, and care. And so, Lutheran Disaster Response is accompanying our companions in Ukraine, Hungary, Poland, and Slovakia, as well as such ecumenical partners as Lutheran World Federation and Church World Service in their humanitarian responses to the crisis. And so, if you are able, we would so appreciate a gift designated for Eastern Europe crisis response. You can make a check out to Trinity Lutheran Church and in the memo line simply indicate Eastern Europe crisis response and we will see that all of those gathered monies are sent to that response. Again, thank you for your consideration as we keep all of these brothers and sisters in Christ in prayer. And now receive the blessing. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you this day. Thanks be to God. Amen.